What's up, mamas? Welcome to Motherhood Monday. I'm your host, Michelle Grosser, and I am so grateful that you're joining me here today. We are going to spend some time talking about what we can do to encourage honesty in our kids. So before we get into the tips and the tricks and the things to consider, I just want to start by acknowledging how common it is for our kids to tell lies. It just, it just is, right? It's not this big moral failure that we need to freak out about. It's not um, a judgment or necessarily a reflection of our own parenting or our own parenting fails. Um, it's just something they're learning. It's like how to tie their shoes or swim in the deep end of the pool. And I've even come across research that shows that the average four-year-old lies every two hours. So all kids occasionally lie because it's just a normal part of their development. And while that doesn't mean that we should, you know, ignore it, uh, what it does mean is that when we catch our kids lying, we don't have to freak out. We can acknowledge that it's normal and we can consider why they might feel the need to lie. And then what we can do is we can teach them and we can coach them and we can parent them about why honesty is important. So in order to do that, we first want to get an understanding of why our kids might lie in the first place, right? And how those reasons might evolve as they continue to grow and as they continue to mature. So for our little ones, you know, our toddlers and our preschoolers, they're probably too young to really understand exactly what it means to lie. So oftentimes if you're working with or living or parenting kids this age, they're not purposefully lying to us, right? Kids this age, they love to exaggerate. We can see it in their stories and we can hear, you know, how they explain things to us. And um, so often I think they're really earnest in those exaggerations, right? Like often it's just simply an expression of their big imaginations and their little brains might have a hard time uh, differentiating between a lie and the truth and between their exaggerations and the truth or between a fairy tale and the truth and between their wishful thinking and the truth. And it's why our preschoolers can sit there right in front of us holding you know, half a cookie and have crumbs all over their face and tell us straight up that they haven't had any cookies today. It's just, just the way that their brains are on the stage that they're at. And it's not malicious. It's not necessarily intentional, but it's where they're at. And then when we're talking about kids who are a little older, maybe you're uh, your kindergarten kids, first grade kids, second grade kids, the kids at this age, they often lie for a reason. So at this age, we really want to be able to work with them to explore and get to the root of their lives. So maybe they really want something, right? Maybe they're, they're already at this age afraid of disappointing us. Maybe they don't want to take responsibility for something. They don't want to be held accountable. Maybe they um, are fearful of what we're going to say, or maybe they're fearful of getting punished, or maybe they're just trying to impress us or impress their friends or impress their teacher, right? Or someone else that they care about. And we'll talk about it more in a minute, but I think that when we catch our kids in these type of lies, the greatest thing we can really do to encourage them to tell the truth is to respond in kindness and to respond in empathy and to respond in compassion. And then after this age, so for your, I guess your third graders up, uh, maybe your eight-year-olds up, this is when we start to see our children's lives become a little more intentional, become a little more purposeful. And we see that they might start, you know, quote unquote, forgetting things on purpose. And at this age, their social status is really important to them. So you might start to see that they're really making things up at this stage to impress you or to impress their friends. And you might also notice that they start stretching the truth. Maybe they're trying to protect their privacy or maybe they're testing some boundaries, uh, some new boundaries of their independence. And they're kind of telling little lies in there to see what happens. So there's a lot of reasons that different kids of different ages might tell lies. Um, and I think we're going to just try to get to the why when we find our kids lying so that we can respond in that compassion and we can really use 
you know, this noticing, this awareness as a moment to teach. So I wanted to give you four just practical tips and things to think about when it comes to raising honest kids, no matter what age they are. So the first one I was thinking about is that we don't want to ask our kids questions that we already know the answer to, right? We don't want to ask them questions that we already know the answers to. And this one is really about kind of shifting our parenting mindset, right? Like we're on the same team with our kids. Do we want to partner with them and teaching them these life skills and these values skills like honesty? Because if we do, why would we set them up to lie? And that's exactly what we're doing, maybe in, inadvertently, but that's exactly what we're doing when we ask them questions we already know the answer to, right? We've got that ball perfectly teed up for them and we have them perfectly situated to lie to us, but we don't need to test them. It's actually not an effective way to teach honesty because what does it do, right? It sets them up to lie. And then we're probably frustrated or triggered that they just you know, made this bold face lie right to our faces. So how do we respond? Well, we probably respond in frustration, anger. That likely makes them feel shameful or it pushes them into this dysregulated kind of panicky state. And then we've lost the opportunity to parent or to coach or to teach. We've really lost an opportunity to effectively discipline them. And you can probably think of a thousand ways that this can grow, that this can show up, right? Like it's, um, it's knowing our kids were eating chocolate chip cookie on the couch when we see the brown stain of chocolate on the couch. Like we don't need to ask them if they just ate chocolate on the white couch. We already know that they made that mess. We already know the answer. Or maybe it's like me this weekend. We find our kids have written in blue marker and then smeared it with their little hands all over the wall. <laughs> Right. But I already know that my four-year-old is the only one in the house who would have done that. Or maybe I hear, you know, my kids kind of squabbling over something and I hear them, you know, one call the other a name or I hear them shoving each other. I catch it. Right. And I storm in there and I'm asking like, who colored all over the wall in here? Right. Or do you just call your sister a name? I mean, I'm not really teaching in that moment. I already know what they did. I already know what happened. They already know, right? They probably already know it wasn't right or good or acceptable, but they got swept away or they made a decision to just disobey me or ignore me. I mean, even preschool kids, right? We see them often lying to avoid getting in trouble. So when I ask them something that I already know the answer to, I'm just setting them up, right? I'm just giving their little brains that perfect opportunity to try to weasel out of it. And then when they do, I'm just going to nail them again. Like we're giving them a way out. And then when they take it, we're getting even more upset. Now they're not only being disciplined for whatever it is, writing on the walls, eating on the couch when they're not supposed to, um, but they're also being disciplined for lying about it. And I'm probably also more upset because their poor choices are compounding, right? I'm just seeing it add up. So the end result is more likely to be both of us upset shame, tears, anger, maybe some yelling and the opportunity to teach, which is really what I want to be doing, right? About that underlying issue and about honesty, which is the value that I'm trying to cultivate and instill in them. It's faded. So what do I do instead? Well, don't miss this. Instead, don't miss it. We'd be honest with them. We'd be honest with them. And you let them know that I already know the truth. You know, I heard you calling your sister a name when you were having an argument just now. I know you ate that chocolate chip cookie that you took on the white couch, even though you know that we have a rule in our house about no eating on the couch. You know, I know that you took that blue marker and colored all over the wall in the bathroom instead of writing on paper like we've talked about, because I can see that your hands look like little Smurf hands <laughs> and acknowledging that I already know the truth, it's being truthful with them. And it avoids putting them in a position where it's so easy for them to lie or where they feel like they need to lie to protect themselves. And then second, we want to discipline with the intent to teach. 
We know that lying is going to happen, right? I just told you the average four-year-old lies twice an hour. <laughs> so we know that telling lies, even though it's a part of childhood development, we still got to do something about it, right? So we catch our kid in a lie. Now what? Well, the first thing we got to do is we've got to regulate ourselves. We got to take a minute if that's what it takes. We've got to calm our own nervous system down. Maybe you're someone who's super triggered by lying for whatever reason, right? If so, I would encourage you. It's just something to take note of. Just notice it. Maybe work through that with a coach or a therapist, but you're not going to be able to have an effective parenting or an effective teaching moment around the importance of telling the truth with your kids. If you're not regulated yourself, if you're so upset about the lie that you can't even think straight, or you can't keep your voice down, it's going to be nearly impossible for you to explore it with your child and, and actually teach in that moment. So you first got to start a practice of regulating your own nervous system. If you catch your kid in, your, in a lie, right, and you find that it's really upsetting to you, find whatever works for you. For me, like I find that usually I just need a couple deep breaths. I just need a couple deep breaths. And then I usually mutter under my breath to myself, like, God, give me patience. God, give me wisdom. You know, whatever it is, I feel like I need to show up in the best way for my child in that moment. And then another reason we want to be regulated in our response is that I think one of the main reasons our kids lie to us is because they're really afraid of um, the reaction they're going to get from us. So they're afraid of what's going to happen if they tell us the truth. They're afraid we're going to respond dysregulated, right? They're afraid we're going to lose it. We're going to yell at them. We're going to shame them. We're going to send them to their rooms. We're going to, you know, be harsh and punish them severely if they tell us the truth. So whatever is our response when they're brave and they do tell us the truth, our response, if we catch them in a lie, right? We want to learn to approach it calmly, even if that means taking a minute even if that means removing ourselves, walking to the other room for a minute, even if that means telling them I need a minute and then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about this, right? Take that breath, say that short prayer for wisdom and patience and peace, whatever it is that helps you regulate and stay calm. I mean, because think about it, right? The more volatile we are, the more angry we are in our response, the more it's actually going to put our kids on the defensive. What does that mean? You know, the more likely than they are to continue that lie, to justify themselves, make up more excuses, right? Bury themselves even deeper in that lie hole that they're digging. So what we want to do instead really is to teach. We want to teach. So first, you know, we calmly acknowledge the lie. Like, I know you lied to me about whatever coloring on the wall, or I know you lied to me about the name you called your sister. I know you lied to me about eating chocolate on the couch. Or if I know they're lying to me, right? Tell them, hey, that doesn't sound like the truth. It's okay. Do you wanna, you wanna try that again? I'm giving you another opportunity right now to tell me the truth. You're not gonna get in trouble. You're not gonna get punished. We're gonna talk about it, but this is it. I'm giving you a chance right now to do the right thing and tell me the truth. Right. And when they do tell you the truth, when you do get to the truth, man, friends, that's not a time for a lecture as much as we want to. Right. It's not a time for a lecture. It's not a time for sarcasm. Instead, we want to just take a minute to explore. Right. And here is where all the magic happens and all the teaching happens and all the learning for ourselves happens and for them. And that level of comfort and intimacy grows. It's this question. I'm curious. Why did you feel like you needed to lie to me about that? Why did you feel like you needed to lie to me about that? And then you listen. You listen without judgment. You listen without getting defensive. You listen without explaining yourself and without justifying yourself. You just listen. Maybe you even try to see it from their side and you try to empathize with them because they're giving you such valuable insight in that moment, right? Maybe they feel like your expectations are too high. Maybe they are anticipating a really harsh judgment and that's a wake-up call for you or harsh punishment, or maybe they don't want to make you angry. And this can start such a great 
conversation. Just talk about why telling the truth is important, but how you can see, right? Why they couldn't tell you the truth in that moment, why they didn't feel like that was safe. You can apologize. You can ask them how they thought you might respond if they had told you the truth, right? You can tell them you're working on how you respond to things. You can tell them everyone makes mistakes. They don't have to lie to hide their mistakes from you, right? You can reinforce that no matter what they do, you're still going to love them. You're still going to show up for them. They can tell you anything and you're going to be a safe place for their honesty, right? And it's creating that safe place for their nervous system and for their little brains to feel like they can practice being truthful. And the truth is it is a practice, right? So when they have a boss or when they have um, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or when they have a spouse or when just their friendships become more complicated or whatever it is, like then they've had practice in telling you the truth. They've had practice in telling the truth when it's uncomfortable, when it feels hard and they're more practiced in it. So the bottom line here with this one is just to remember our role. We're the teacher, we're the parent, we're the coach, right? We're not the police, we're not the enforcer, we're not the dictator. And if we want to see more honesty in our kids, we first have to be really intentional about creating an environment that encourages honesty. And then number three, we want to make sure that we're seeing and acknowledging when they do tell the truth. And it's exactly what it sounds like, right? We want to see, we want to acknowledge the things we want to see more of in our kids. So when we see them choosing to tell the truth instead of a lie, or when we see them, you know, recognizing that they told a lie and then course correcting and apologizing and deciding to tell the truth instead, like see it, see it and acknowledge how hard it is for them to do that. Acknowledge how much bravery it takes. Acknowledge it was the right thing to do. Like I saw you make a good decision right there and do it with specifics, right? The more detailed we can be in our praise, that's the better teaching. That's the more effective teaching. That praise is really going to build their confidence. It's going to build their confidence in telling the truth that it's safe to do that. And it's going to reinforce the positive behavior that we're trying to cultivate that truth telling the honesty. And then finally, we want to model truth telling. We want to model truth telling for them and to them. So like always, we got to be it if we want to see it. And when it comes to telling the truth, I think this one's probably a lot more subtle than we realize because our kids probably see us and hear us lying all the time. And most of the time, it's probably not even intentional but their little brains might not know or understand our motives, right? Like if they hear us telling a little white lie, like they don't know we're just trying to be polite or maybe we think we're just trying to protect someone else's feelings. So I would just encourage you just to raise your own awareness about your own truth telling, right? What are your own habits around telling the truth? And I'm not talking about these big, you know, bold faced, obvious, like, quote unquote, bad or wrong lies. What I'm talking about is all these little things. You know, do you ask your kids to keep secrets? Do you ask them not to tell someone something? Do you, uh, maybe, you know, they're on the phone with their grandmother or their aunt or something and th that person wants to talk to you. Do you tell your kids like, oh, tell them I'm not here. You know, tell them I'm sick. Tell them I'm in the bathroom or whatever. Like these are lies. And as adults, I think we see a lot of this behavior as harmless and maybe it is and maybe it isn't, but either way, we're teaching our kids not to be truthful. And when they're young, if they see and model and get in the habit of telling those little white lies and those little fibs, it's going to be easier, I think, for them to slip into a habit of telling bigger lies. And this is something I've had to work on a lot in my own life, like not even really in front of my kids. But just making an intentional effort not to lie. And where I really noticed it showing up was at work. Like I'd be in the middle of focusing on some big project and I'd get a phone call, you know, from a client who's always bringing some drama. And I knew, I just knew I didn't have the time. I didn't have the emotional 
space or energy for it. So I tell my assistant, like, you know, tell her I'm out to lunch, tell her I'm with another client, you know, tell her I'm already on the other line. And it wasn't true, but I didn't see the harm, right? I'd call her back later, no harm, no foul. But more accurately, I wasn't even thinking about it. And I think these are habits. So I started becoming more aware of those little white lies I was telling, right? Telling someone I loved something that I actually didn't like. Telling Jeff I was fine when I probably wasn't. Maybe telling my kids to hold on a minute when I knew that I actually probably needed 20 minutes. And it seems like these little things, but the truth is that these are habits, right? And I know my kids are watching me. And I know it's a matter of time before these little harmless lies, they probably are going to grow bigger or I just become more comfortable in telling them. Right. And then I start bringing them home and then I start doing it more often and telling, you know, telling myself uh, to the point where maybe I don't even know if I'm telling the truth or not. So it's just something to be aware of, I think, and be intentional about in our own lives. And then finally, another thing that I try to focus on um, and really be intentional about is that I don't lie to my kids. I don't lie to them about the uncomfortable things. I don't lie to them about the painful things or the harm things. Like I just don't do it. And this is my philosophy and how I've decided to parent my own kids. And it doesn't mean you know that it's the right way or the only way. And maybe some of you will disagree or really feel strongly about doing things differently. And that's fine, but it is just something to think about. You know, like I tell my kids, yeah, getting a shot, it hurts. It really hurts. It really hurts for a little bit. You know, I tell them what I know to be true about really hard things, death, you know, divorce, disappointing people, making tough decisions, talking about my own emotions, right? When I'm sad or when I'm angry. You know, I tell them real answers when they ask me questions, right? I tell them the truth about their bodies and the things that their bodies can do and how their bodies were intended to be used. And I, if they ask me like straight up about fairy tales or about characters, like, I don't know, the tooth fairy or the Easter bunny, like I tell them the truth. And it doesn't mean that I'm ruining the magic of childhood. It doesn't mean that I'm, you know, telling them about all of these things with the same amount of detail that I might discuss it, you know, with Jeff or with a girlfriend. It doesn't mean I'm sharing it with the same level of depth or, you know, as graphic as I might otherwise, but I can say it in a way that's age appropriate and still truthful. I can say it in a way that's truthful and also still you know, preserves the magic and the, the joy and the wonder of childhood. I can tell them the truth about scary things like shots without actually scaring them. Because I found with my kids that they really honor, even in their young age, they really honor and they really appreciate the truth. And my kids trust me. I tell them, you know, if we're going to the doctor's appointment and they're going to get a shot, And if they ask me if they're going to get a shot, and if they ask me if it's going to hurt, like I tell them, I tell them everyone feels things a little differently, but yeah, you are going to get a shot today and it's probably going to hurt for a little bit. And we can talk about, you know, why they still need to get shots, even if it's scary and it hurts. We can talk about the fact that they can do hard things and they can do painful things. And when they get a little older, like my five and a half year old, like she can remember the last time she got a shot and she can remember how much it hurt, but she can also remember that it only hurt for a couple minutes. And then after that, she got a lollipop or an ice cream or whatever, and it was fine. Um, but she also knows that I'm going to be right there with her through it. And, and she can see me being truthful and it really does. It builds so much trust. And then, you know what, when they are scared and I actually tell them the opposite in truth right when I tell them they don't have to be scared of something because it's not real like monsters under their bed or if I tell them they don't have to be worried that something's gonna hurt because it's not gonna hurt like I don't know jumping into a a ball pit or something like that like they believe me they believe me because I have a practice of honesty with them so I think the best way to teach your kids about anything really is, is just to be it, to be it so they can see it. So 
if honesty is important to us, you know, the best way to teach honesty to our kids is to be honest ourselves. So those are the four things. The first is we're not going to ask questions we already know the answer to, right? We're not going to set our kids up to lie. Like if we already know the answer, we're going to be honest in that and we're going to be straightforward with our kids. And then second, we're going to discipline with the intent to teach. We're not punishers, right? We're not here to make our kids feel shame or send them to their room so they can think about what they've done, right? We're going to be intentional. And within this, we first need to take a moment to regulate ourselves before we can talk to them about lying if we're feeling angry or upset or betrayed or whatever it is, right? And then we want to explore the why behind their lie, that magic question, right? Why did you feel like you needed to lie to me about this? And then we're going to listen to their response from a place of genuine curiosity, and genuine care and interest and concern and empathy. And then we're going to discuss the importance of them telling the truth and how they might go about doing so next time. And then third, we're going to see and acknowledge when they tell the truth, right? Catch them telling the truth, seeing it, acknowledging it, celebrating it. And then fourth, we're just going to model truth telling for them. We're going to grow an awareness of our own truth telling, right? How often are we telling those little white lies? How often are we asking them not to tell someone something or to keep a secret? How often are they seeing us, you know, wiggle our way out of something or tell a little lie to avoid an uncomfortable discussion, whether it's in their presence or not, right? Because when we grow in our awareness, we can start to make changes we think are going to serve us and our families better. So that's it. That's some ideas I think we can practice and harness in encouraging our kids to tell the truth. And it is Motherhood Monday, and we always start the week praying over our kids about this value that we discussed. So would you join me in prayer as we pray honesty over our kids together today? God, we just thank you for our children and we thank you for our families today. Lord, we pray honesty over our children. You created us, God. You created our children in your image and your likeness, and you are the source of all truth. So it's easy to see why knowing the truth and telling the truth, why it's so important to us, but it's not easy. So we ask you to guide us, guide our children in their daily thoughts and in their words and in their actions. And I pray that our children are truthful to themselves, God. Release them, Lord, from a pattern of telling themselves lies because of you know, their insecurities or their fear or whatever reason it is, God. We just pray truth. We pray authenticity, we pray transparency, and we pray integrity, God, because we know that they can't be honest with us or with each other or with you if they first can't be honest with themselves. And I know, God, that culture tells us that truth is relative and it doesn't really matter what we do or what we say, but we know that's not true. So help our children to see this too, God. Help them to understand and to see that being honest, it's not just about speaking the truth, but it's also about how we act in the face of those who are being untruthful. So just give our kids courage, give them courage to stand for the truth and to stand in the gap and to say and do something when they're in the presence of untruthfulness. We know that if our kids get in the habit of lying about the small things, they're likely going to start lying about bigger things. So just help us be a model of truth for them. Help us to stay true, even in those little things, the little white lies, even in what seems harmless, because all lying is destructive. It hurts us, hurts others, hurts our relationships. You know, all our relationships are founded on trust. So help our children just to be trustworthy so they can experience those deep and meaningful, honest relationships. And when our kids mess up, God, when we mess up, tell a lie wiggle our way out of something, right? When we don't show up in truthfulness, just free us from the shame. You know, let our kids come to us. Let us come, let them come to you for forgiveness, right? Let us respond to our kids when they've lied. Let us respond with empathy, with understanding. Give us the wisdom and the patience to teach them instead of punish them, God. We're here to guide them. We're here to parent them. We're here to just be an extension of your loving kindness while they're in our care. 
So we ask for your help. We ask for your direction in raising them. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.